Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue building our color app. We're only going to have, I want to say, two more videos after this one if I if I planned it correctly. Um, this video is going to be all about styles because I'm tired of looking at this ugly thing. Yes, it works, but we want to make it a little bit prettier. The things we're going to be styling are our H1. We're going to be styling our body. We're going to be styling our um, color display span by adding BR tags or line break tags. We're going to style our color display. We're going to style our buttons. We're going to style our message bar, or that's that little little strip thing there. We're going to style um, the buttons whenever you hover over them. We're going to style our squares to make them a little bit prettier. And finally, we're going to style, style our container. So let's go ahead and take get that going. Now on our final one, let's just go ahead and look our H1 there. Look at our My Awesome, and then it has a span inside, My Awesome Color Game. That's what it looks like. It's this right up here. And over here, ours looks like that, which is ugly as sin. So let's go ahead and go to our CSS. And let's look at our H1. It's do a little bit more than just coloring it white. So first thing, we want to align to the center. So text align center save and refresh and now we've got it centered on the page just like it is here then we're going to set the background color and you can set this really whatever you want i like steel blue it's easy to remember and it's that color right there now we've got that steel blue awesomeness um we want our margin to be zero and our padding to be 20 pixels and zero. Save and refresh. There we go. It's still not quite to the to the edge of the screen, but that's something we're going to have to handle um, later inside of the body. But we've got this H1 taking up the whole thing. We've got the background set there. And we have zero margin between it and this little white strip. So next, we're going to mess with the font a little bit. Font weight is going to be normal. Refresh, and you'll see that updates there. Text transform it's going to be uppercase. Now it's all uppercase, just like it is over here. Let's set the line height to 1.1. And that should be all that we have to do to the H1. We've got it looking a little bit better. We still don't have it. It's obviously not exactly where we want it. It's not perfect, but it's looking better. It's, it's headed in the right direction. Um, next, what's next on our list? So we did that. Then let's do the body next. The body is right here. We only have to do a few things here to this body. First, we're going to set the margin to zero. The purpose of that is going to get rid of this little extra space. So now our um, title and everything goes all the way to the edge. And the next thing we're going to do is update the font so that it's a little bit better. Because right now this is just your basic font. It's a serif font, which looks kind of ugly. It looks a little, little out of date. Um, realistically, if you're using serif fonts, this is just a quick and dirty rule. Use serif fonts if you're wanting to be very formal. If you're not wanting to be formal and you're wanting to be a little bit more modern, use sans serif fonts. That's not a catch-all rule. That's not a perfect rule. That's just what I use to determine whether I'm going to use serif fonts or sans serif fonts. So we want a sans serif font. So our font family. And I'm going to use one that comes pre-installed on my computer, Avenir. Um, most computers have this one, the majority of them do, not all of them, so you need to make sure and provide some backup. Montserrat is another one that's popular, and then finally, Sans Serif. It would help if I could type there. So what this is going to do is it'll check your computer. If you have Avenir and you have it installed and ready to go, it'll use it. If not, it'll use Montserrat if you have that, and if you don't have that, it'll just use your system basic default Sans Serif. So refresh, and now we've got a much better looking font. You can see now that my awesome is the exact same as it is here, or darn close to it. And that's all we have to do to the body. So we can check that off and get to styling our color display span. In order to do that, we're going to have to come into our HTML. And really, this is not the 100% best way to do this, but it's a nice and easy hack. And for this, for again, for this tiny little project, it wouldn't really matter. We're just going to put a cheeky little BR tag there. That's a line break. 
And then after the span, we're going to do another one. And refresh. This just puts them all three on their different lines. There are other ways to do this. There are ways that are a little bit more um, modern, if you will. This is just the easiest way to do it and the quickest way to do it. And it works just fine for our application. So we have handled that. Now we have to actually style that color display. And that's this right here. That's that, um, where is it? That span right there color display that has the RGB in it. We're going to style that because you'll notice over here it's significantly bigger than the fonts or the other H1 around it. So we just come into our CSS and we select it. Um, C-O-L comes before C-O-N. Color display. Let's set the font size to just 200%. Make it 200% and refresh. There we go. Look at that. We are almost there. Now let's look at our buttons. Now on here, our buttons are definitely looking a lot better than they do here. Go over to our CSS and start messing with our buttons. I'm just going to select all the buttons. U-T-T-O-N. All the buttons. And we're just going to set several different properties to make them look a lot more modern. We're going to set the border to none. To see what that looks like. All right, perfect. Background color, none. Refresh. All right. Text transform to uppercase. And remember, text transform will take whatever text is in there and do something to it. So we now are, it's all uppercase. Height is going to be 100%, and that's 100% of their container because we want them to take up the uh, maximum size of their container. Font weight, make it a little bit heavier font of 700. Now that's kind of a bold font. Font size is going to be inherit, because we want to get their font size, there we go, from their parent. We're going to set the color to that same steel blue that we did earlier, that we set up here. And right now that's a little bit harder to read, so we'll, but don't worry, we'll take care of that. Steel blue, letter spacing. I just set that to one pixel. Give it a little bit more spacing because that, that was hard to read without that. Let's comment that out so we can see it again. See, this a little bit looks a little bit cramped. It's not too bad, but now it's got a little bit more space. Looks a little less um, anxious looking. And that is it for the buttons for now. We're actually going to come back later and add one more property onto them, but it's not going to do anything right now. So we're just going to wait until we get there. Buttons. Now we're going to style the actual strip itself. So we already have that down here at the bottom where we set the background color to white. We're just going to do a couple more things. Set the height. Let's do 30 pixels. Now I know this isn't responsive, so it would be a little bit better if we did um, maybe an EM or an REM. So let's try 1.2 REM. See if that does it. Let's do EM instead of REM. Nope. Let's try 2 EM. It's a little bit too big. Maybe 1.6. One point eight, maybe. There we go. That's close enough. It's slightly smaller. Maybe two em wasn't too big. Slightly bigger, but that's close enough. I like it. We're just going to stick with two em, and then we want to move everything to the middle. So text align center. Refresh, and now we've got our stuff in the middle. The problem with this is that right now they're all scrunched in together. There's no room for that message until you click something, and then you get that message, and it pushes them out, and it just looks weird like that. So we're going to have to put, add some spacing in between there. We'll do that in just a second. But we have styled this, the little stripe. So we're done there. Now we're going to add a hover effect to the button. If you notice here in our final one, whenever you hover over a button, it has that little highlight effect that comes in and goes out. You can do that with the hover property. So I'm going to come back up to button and then right below it do button hover. And whenever the button is hovered we want to do two things. If you look here we want, because right now by default our buttons are a grayish color and the text is blue, it's that steel blue. But when you hover those are inverted. The button itself turns that steel blue and the text is the, is the white. It actually turns white instead of gray. So we want to do both of those things. Let's go ahead and set the color to white because that's the text. And then the background color to steel blue. 
And refresh, and let's, there we go. Now you'll see this one instantly, just boom, boom, boom. While on ours, it has this cool little fade in, fade out effect. That was the other part of this button that we're gonna do. It's called a transition. Transition all 0.3s, that's 0.3 seconds. We haven't really talked about transitions much. There's there's a giant, giant rabbit hole of CSS animations and transitions and things that you can go down. There's all kinds of amazing things you can do with these. I personally haven't learned them well enough to feel, feel good teaching them to you. That's on my list of things to learn. They're wonderful. They're awesome. I just haven't had the time to learn them well enough yet. But I do know some. So the transition property here, basically what this does is it says for all of your transitions, make them fade in or fade out or, or take place over 0.3 seconds. So really, actually, let's just go ahead and set this to 2 seconds just to really illustrate this. If I hover over this, over the course of 2 seconds, you see it fades in and it fades back out. That's obviously not what we want. I tested it and I personally like 0 0.3. I think it's quick enough, and but yet you can still see it. You can play with this and you can make yours. If you like it better being a different speed, that's perfectly fine. Um, just make sure you do that. All right, so we got the button. Now we have our squares. So let's scroll down to square. And right now we're already setting the width, some of the padding, the float, and the margin. We're going to add a few more things. We're going to add, if you'll notice here, they have this little, they're rounded off. So if we remember from our CSS, that's using border radius. Border radius. I'm going to do 15%. I believe that's, that's it. Is that it? Yeah, 15% right there. The next thing I want to do is, whenever I click them here, they fade out. They don't just instantly go away. While over here, I click on them, they're instantly gone. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the buttons and use a transition. So for a square, we're going to do transition. And instead of targeting all like we did in the buttons, where's the button? Button hover, let's see, transition all, we're only going to target background. We're only going to do it in the background, and we're going to make it over, well, let's try 0 0.3 seconds just to see if that's appropriate. Refresh. Like that. I think I did a little bit longer on this one. Yeah, I did this one a little bit longer. Um, so just listen to your heart, do whatever you want. I'm going to do 0 0.5 to make it match. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's what I did. And then we have to add a couple more properties here to make sure this transition works on different browsers. Um, so we have to add WebKit, transition, background, 0 0.5 seconds. And then we have to add Moz, transition, background, 0 0.5 seconds. And like I said, those are just for different browsers uh, and browser compatibility to make sure this works on all the different browsers. And there's our squares, and then finally we have our container. And there's actually a little bit more because I want to get, I want to set the selected class up. I don't think I identified that at the beginning. I want to change that so it's not quite that ugly. So we need to modify the container slightly, just slightly, because you'll notice here, here is our version. Let's refresh the page, and here's the completed version. Let's refresh that page. You'll notice the squares are a little bit, little bit lower there, just, just a smidgen lower. And we're just going to set that on the container instead of the margin being zero. We're going to set it to 20 pixels, oops, 20 pixels, auto, refresh, and now it's down there. Now it's, there we go, perfect. You'll notice that slight change because we set the, um, this little stripe here using EM, and I think I set it with pixels on my example version, but that's close enough, who really cares? And honestly, that's better because it makes the site more responsive. Next thing I need to do is come up to this selected class and instead of just setting the background color to blue we're going to set the background color to steel blue we're also going to change the color to white so there we go easy hard easy hard just like in this version we're getting closer and closer and closer and one more thing i keep adding things 11 is going to be the message where is it? Right here. Right now, you'll notice on ours, these buttons are smashed in together until you have something in that message, and then they're smashed up against the message. While in this version, they are spread out, and they don't move when you get the message. They just stay put. So fixing this is very simple. We just have to come over here and add a couple properties to the message. And I know it's message because it's the ID 
span ID of message. It's that span. Oops, there. So M comes here. First, we're going to make it an inline block. And then we're going to set the width to 20%. So now we have a span. There's nothing in that span, but if we look at our inspector, and let's make this big so we can see it more easily, we have this span, and you can see that it has width to it. It's 333 pixels wide, and that will change depending on how big our window is. But it has width to it. It has 20% of the, of the width of its parent, and its parent spans the entire thing of the screen. So that span is now 20% of the width of your screen, and it will always remain 20% of the width of your screen, even if you make your screen bigger. So now our buttons no longer move, and we have reserved space for that message. So how is that everything, finally? Yes, we've done all of those things. In the next video, we're going to be handling a few little lingering bugs. Most of it's just UI stuff that don't actually um, interact with the functionality at all. And we're going to be doing some refactoring to make our code drier and cleaner and easier to read and, and interact with. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.